American television sitcom Sanford and Son aired on NBC from January 14, 1972 to March 25, 1977. While it was produced by Norman Lear and Bud Yorkin's film and television production company, Tandem Productions, because of Norman's commitments to his other concurrent series, he was not hands-on at all with Sanford and Son, as many reports over time have claimed him to be. The show running was always left to Bud. The series follows Fred Sanford, a widower and junk dealer played by John Elroy Sanford, better known by his stage name, Red Fox, and his son, Lamont Sanford, played by Damon Wilson. They share a home and business on South Central Avenue in the LA neighborhood of Watts. Before Good Times and the Jeffersons would make TV history with powerful stories focused on Black families, Sanford and Son would explore the prickly relationship between an older Black man and his son amid the absence of Fred's beloved late wife, Elizabeth, who died more than 20 years before the start of the series. Nearly two dozen recurring characters also helped to fill out the cast, including Esther Anderson, also known as Aunt Esther, played by LaWanda Page, who is the Bible-toting sister of Fred's late wife, Grady Wilson, played by Whitman Mayo Jr., who is Fred's simple-minded best friend, Bubba Bexley, played by Donald Bexley, who's another of Fred's friends, and Rollo Lawson, played by Nathaniel Taylor, who is Lamont's best friend. The theme song called The Street Beater was composed by famed record producer, songwriter, composer, arranger, film and television producer, Quincy Jones. It was first released by a and Records on his 1973 album, You've Got It Bad Girl, and as a single. It's also featured on his Greatest Hits album. Although it didn't reach Billboard status for that year, it has maintained mainstream popularity. In his memoir, Norman Lear recounts that he and Bud had seen Red Fox perform in Las Vegas and loved his originality and comic voice. As Norman tells it, the show was actually bought by one network under the roof of another. Because All in the Family, another one of his productions was a CBS show, he was renting a small studio there to rehearse Red and Demond for the Sanford and Son pilot. Though he asked CBS executives to stop by, Norman says no one there found the time. So he brought in executives from NBC who bought the show on the spot. At its debut, Sanford and Son was the first network show with a predominantly black cast since Amos and Andy back in the 50s. The setup followed the framework set by All in the Family. Fred Sanford was the short-tempered elder, often espousing bigoted or insensitive views and annoyed by the more open-minded, progressive attitude of his son Lamont. Storylines often revolved around Fred's get-rich-quick schemes and Lamont's frustration with his father's unwillingness to do half the work of running their business. Fred often called his son dummy, and he sought sympathy during arguments or tense times by faking a heart attack, grabbing his chest, and declaring, This is a big one. I'm dying. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. Besides his conflicts with Lamont, Fred locked horns with his late wife's sisters, especially on Esther. And in exchanges that might make modern audiences squirm, he expressed prejudices against Latino and Asian people. Fred even used the N-word during an episode. Bud Yorkin told NPR back in 2008 that Red pushed him to allow use of the word. He said, let me do that stuff. I want to be able to say that. And I said, well, you know, I don't feel comfortable with it. He said, I can do it. You can do it. I don't want somebody else doing it, but I can do it. So I said, well, okay, Red. And he did it. And by and large, we never got any complaints. But Sanford and Son also had its critics, who saw long-held stereotypes about lazy Black men in Fred's allergy to work. In a 1973 story for the New York Times, a Black writer called the show, quote, white to the core, end quote, alleging that the series presented a vision of Black men through the eyes of white people that was limiting and damaging. She wrote, we, all of us, need to be surrounded by positive and true images of Blackness based upon Black realities, not upon white aberrations. Sanford and Son was an almost instant hit, landing in the Nielsen Top 10 for nearly all of its six seasons on the air. Across that run, it also earned seven Emmy nominations. The positive results the show was getting, though, didn't mean that there weren't any behind-the-scenes drama, because there was. While taping episodes for the third season, Red walked off the show in a salary dispute, 
though he cited health issues. He and his physician claimed he was suffering from, quote, nervous exhaustion, claustrophobia, and calcification between the fifth and sixth vertebrae in his back, end quote. Thanks to the show, and his marriage of 17 years was falling apart because of his busy schedule. His character was written out of the series for the remaining episodes of that season, and it was explained that Fred was away in St. Louis attending his cousin's funeral, with Grady in charge of the home. NBC and Tandem Productions also claimed Red, quote, appeared at the studio flaunting a pearl-handled revolver, end quote. The production company sued Red and Demond, who had joined Red at the start of season four out of solidarity for $10 million, claiming breach of contract. The dispute was resolved in the summer of 1974, with Red receiving a salary bump up to $25,000 an episode, as well as receiving 25% of the producer's net profits. During the show's fifth season, NBC premiered a spin-off show titled Grady. It starred Whitman Mayo Jr., who reprises his role as Grady Wilson, and leaves Watts to move in with his daughter and her family in Westwood. The series never found a solid audience, though, and was quickly cancelled. In 1977, rival network ABC lured Red away with a large sum to host his variety show, The Red Fox Comedy Hour, effectively ending Sanford and Son, which had been gradually declining in ratings anyway. The same year the series was canceled, a short-lived continuation featuring the supporting characters titled Sanford Arms aired. The attempt to continue a popular series without its two main stars turned out to be a failure. The ratings were low, and the show was cancelled after only producing 10 episodes. In 1980, Red attempted to revive the show with another short-lived series, simply titled Sanford, but Damon Wilson refused to reprise his role as Lamont. While the show did manage to squeeze out two seasons, it continued to struggle in the ratings until NBC decided to pull the plug. Now, let's get into some fun facts about Sanford and Son. The show was adapted from a British TV series called Steptoe and Son. The producers originally planned for characters Fred and Lamont to be Italian men. They weren't convinced that black characters would work, but in the end, CBS executive Fred Silverman allowed them to take that risk. After trying out some Italian actors and never having it feel quite right, the network caved. Red wore makeup to make himself look older. He had to since he was only 49 years old when the series began. Fred Sanford was 65. In addition to getting into character with makeup, he also gave Fred his distinctive walk using an unusual method of wearing weighted shoes to achieve his off-kilter shuffle waddle. Red Fox almost wasn't offered the role of Fred Sanford. Stage, film, and television actor Clavon Little was first approached to work on the project, but declined because of prior commitments. He then suggested Red, his co-star in the 1970 action comedy film Cotton Comes to Harlem for the role. NBC reportedly wasn't thrilled with the idea of casting him, though, since he was known as a stand-up comedian with very controversial material. The test screening of Red in the role with network executives and the cast of All in the Family in attendance ended up sealing the deal. Fred Sanford was named after Red's real-life brother, Fred Sanford Jr. LaWanda Page was Red's first and only choice to play Esther. She almost didn't get the part since she was actually too nervous to give producers an audition they liked, but Red insisted they be patient with her because he knew she would be great. As they both aired on the same day and at the same time, Sanford and Son put enough of a dent into the audience of ABC's The Brady Bunch to drive it off the air in 1974. The famous salvage truck used on the show was a 1951 Ford F1. For a while, Red kept it at his home after the series ended, but returned it to NBC for the spinoff Sanford. It ultimately ended up being purchased by a car dealership in Ohio and is proudly displayed in the showroom as well as at car shows. Red loved the vocal group The Ink Spots so much that he paid out of pocket for their songs to be featured on the show. Even though Damon Wilson and Nathaniel Taylor's characters were best friends, behind the scenes, the dynamic between the actors was a different story. Damon told iloveoldschoolmusic.com in 2015 that they never really got along while they were filming the series. He also said the last time he saw Nathaniel was in 1977, and that the only reason they appeared to have good chemistry on screen was because they were high most of the time they were shooting episodes. When Damon released his 2009 memoir, Second Banana, The Bittersweet Memoirs of the Sanford and Son Years, it revealed the truth about how he and Red Fox were treated at NBC. We were breaking ground, we were making history. 
but when we first came to NBC, we didn't even have dressing rooms, except on a shoot day. We were dressing in the men's room when our first show aired. The ratings went through the ceiling, and then Red and I started dealing with them like men. Red and I were making history, and they tried to deal with us like we were third-class feel hands. Another secret Damon revealed was that not only was Aunt Esther never sober, she was the cast drug dealer. LaWanda Page kept the cast stocked without even charging them for the product. When confronted on the claims, she admitted to it while laughing, but says she never did, quote, any of that harder stuff, end quote. While their personal relationship for the entire run of the show was always positive, things between Red and Damon took a major nosedive at the very end, after Damon found out through a magazine article that Red was leaving the show. He felt some kind of way that Red never addressed it with him directly. While Red Fox was famous for faking heart attacks on Sanford and Son, the actor experienced a real one on October 11th, 1991. He was on a break from rehearsals for his new show, CBS sitcom The Royal Family, when it happened on set. He was about to do an interview when co-star Della Reese noticed him on the ground. He was taken to the Queen of Angels Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center, where he died. He was 68 years old. Donald Bexley died of heart and kidney failure on April 15, 1997, at Hampton Centara Hospital. He was 87 years old. Whitman Mayo Jr. died of a heart attack on May 22, 2001, at Atlanta's Grady Memorial Hospital. He was 70 years old. Lawanda Page died of a heart attack following complications from diabetes on September 14, 2002. She was 81 years old. On February 23, 2019, Nathaniel Taylor was rushed to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center after suffering from a heart attack. He died there from the complications four days later. He was 80 years old. Sony Pictures Home Entertainment released all six seasons of Sanford and Son in North America on DVD between 2002 and 2005, with a complete series box set following in 2008. In January 2022, Sanford and Son celebrated its 50th anniversary.